If you know, you know. The Halo Car to End All Halo Cars Used to show what a car can be capable of when brought to its full potential without any regards for outsider opinions. This is the story behind the marketing genius of the Dodge Demon. Proceeding the launch of the Hellcat in 2015, all you would see on your social media feed was the number 707, referring to the absurd horsepower rating of the 6.2 liter supercharged V8. And think about it, the most power you could get out of an attainable car before this was the Corvette Z06 with only 650 horsepower for $14,000 more. And after three years of meme after meme, clickbait title after clickbait title, YouTuber after YouTuber buying, modifying, and destroying their Hellcats in a unique yet familiar way, it seemed that this was the peak. Until. In the depths of Detroit, Michigan, home of Dodge, lies an experimental beast locked inside of its cage. As the team arrives to inspect, you see a glimpse of the iconic dual halo headlights of the Dodge Challenger. As they load it up, carry it outside, helicopters flying overhead, they release it onto the streets. In the distance, what looks like the Grim Reaper marks the finish line for the animal. And as it steps out of its cage, you see what looks like a cat from hell. That's a reference to the hell cat. Bite down on a canister of race gas and morph before our eyes into. Give me fuel, give me fire, give me that which I desire. And this was the release of the name Demon, as well as the brilliantly named promotional website if you know you know .com, where all of the videos we will be discussing in this video were released. The newly named demon steps onto the scale and easily maxes it out. Now for a little context, Dodges are well known for being heavy, especially for being considered sports cars. But this was about to change. Suddenly, things begin to highlight and lighten the scale, such as the brakes, front suspension, and passenger seat? The monocoque, mirrors, and now the back seat all highlight, making it lighter and lighter. The more that highlights, the lighter the scale gets, and... You hear the engine roaring, tires squealing, and most importantly, supercharger whining. As the car rolls away and the smoke clears, you see the iconic burnout marks that can only be left by drag radials. We see what we now know as the crate being opened by someone in a full race suit. They begin to take out some key items such as electric impact, torque wrench, and a low profile jack. As it pans out, the racer stands surrounded by more intriguing items, most notably two skinnies. Now skinnies are specifically used by drag racers in order to reduce weight and friction in the non-driving tires, causing optimal quarter mile times. But in the last flash of the screen, we see something poking out of the top of the crate, a race harness. Smoke appears shaped as a pitchfork, then again turning into smoke, going into not one, but two different headlights. Quick fourth wall break, but the headlights were hollowed out on the Hellcat to allow just that much more air to get into the engine, and it was kind of cool 
But was anybody else tired of seeing the day 101 and they still don't know I'm a headlight? Or the air intake, whatever. I was so sick of those. Anyway. Then, more of the smoke goes into the massive hood scoop and is funneled into the factory cold air intake. With the supercharger whining, we see the twin screw spinning. With a flash, 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 we get a glimpse of the appropriately named air grabber logo. Factory cold air intake, functional vent, and the sheer girth of the scoop. A very quick, yet very important video. As the car launches, we see the tire wrinkle. This indicates incredible traction and incredible power. In a flash, we see the demon-specific drag radials, which shows 315 millimeter wide tires, a 40% aspect ratio, which is a much taller sidewall than the Hellcat had, and an 18 inch rim, two inches smaller than the Hellcat, which indicates how incredibly serious Dodge is taking this car when it comes to function over form. Video seven, third law, break time. Uh, we won't know much about this video and what it means until later in this video. We'll kind of come back to it at the end, but basically it's just saying that Dodge changed the suspension in order to help with weight distribution at launch, whatever. Well, like I said, we'll come back to this one. Next. As the car launches, we see A383 aluminum for the rear differential, which is much stronger and much lighter than typical aircraft grade aluminum. High strength steel drive shafts and axles to prevent twisting. The Demon Race Harness Bar, which confirms the deleted backseat from the reduction video and the harness from the crate video. The video begins with displaying the fact that this car shows live horsepower and torque figures. It pans to the speedometer, then pans outside of the vehicle, where you see the demon strapped to a dyno. As it's revving up and revving up more and more, it finally lets off, and you see an interesting page, IC coolant temp, quickly dropping. At the very end of the video, you see flashes of all the different, quote, performance pages the demon has to offer. The IC coolant temp is the big one. IC standing for intercooler for the supercharger, meaning there is some technology built into the intercooler that we do not yet know about. We hear a rev, we see a launch, and down the track it goes. As the demon stages and pulls up to the line, we hear a peculiar change in its idle, from the familiar rumble of a V8 to an almost drumming sound that can only mean a trans brake. Now for those of you that do not know or understand what a trans brake is, essentially it's a solenoid that rapidly shifts the car from drive to reverse so that you can build full power as if you're in first gear, but it won't let you go forward because it's going in reverse at the same time. Engineering Explain has a way better video about it, so I'll just link him in the description. As it launches, we see it take off, wrinkle the tires again, and blast down the strip. We see temperatures dropping, liquid cooling, crystals forming, and a flash of the supercharger. At the end, there's an image of the drag strip, and if you have not noticed, the demon has always been on the right side of the strip. 
This is going back to the performance pages video, meaning that yes, there is some kind of intercooler technology built into the supercharger that helps with cooling. And last but not least, we see the racer filling the demon with green gas that indicates a minimum of 98 octane. It begins to flow through the braided fuel lines and into the engine with a final rev before flashing an image of a new button with a fuel pump on it. Technically video 14 is the last video, but this is basically just a release video talking about all the numbers and everything that we learned just before it, like quarter mile times, uh, trap speed, etc. But I'm not done yet because I can already hear people asking, but what about the numbers? Well, let me tell you, and warning, you're going to have to put on your thinking caps before we get into these. At the end of the third video, body, we see the license plate read 2576 at 35, which means 2,576 pounds of weight transfer at launch in order to lift the front wheels off the ground for 35 feet. Yes, to this day, it is still the only production vehicle to do a wheelie from the factory. At the end of the seventh video, Third Law, the one that we kind of skipped over earlier, in the smoky burnout, it reads 13.5 equals 575 at 500. Now if you Google this, a lot of people debate on what it actually means, with most of them being wrong. But it actually goes like this. At 13.5 miles per hour from launch, you are experiencing 1.8 G's of acceleration, which is about the same as Shaquille O'Neal sitting on your chest while you're laying on the ground, which roughly equates to 57.5 feet per second, all of which happens at 0.500 seconds into your run, showing just how fast all of this is occurring. At the beginning of the video, No Pills, shows a license plate reading 3.9 plus 221 equals 405. This shows that the supercharger is pushing 3.9 pounds of boost, resulting in 221 additional pound-feet of torque at launch, resulting in a total launch torque of 405 pound-feet. Lastly, this is from the plate at the very beginning of lock and load, showing 8.3 plus 317 equals 534. This is the video showing the trans brake. Similar to the previous plate, but this time, when the trans brake is engaged, making peak launch power, there's an insane 8.3 pounds of boost, resulting in 317 additional pound-feet of torque for a total launch torque of 534 pound-feet. So where are we now? We can all agree that there never has been and never will be a car, let alone a halo car, dedicated to one thing so well. Speed. Getting from point A to point B as quickly as possible. It is the most affordable and the most powerful of all of the Halo cars. It was the most well marketed and because of the Demon, Dodge now has an 800 horsepower wide body sedan. To this day, it is still the only factory production car to do a wheelie and it is still the quickest in the quarter mile for a non-electric car. And that's kind of the issue with the Demon, is there never will be another Demon again because of the rise in electric cars. We all knew this day was coming, and here it is. Tesla Model S Plaid and the Remac Nevera, both quicker than the Demon, both significantly more expensive, and they're electric. 
Now I know the upload schedule has been a little off and um, if you made it all the way to the end of this video, I appreciate it. Um, comment Starbucks cake pop to, <laughs> so I can know if you went all the way to the end. But I've been really intimidated by making this video and I finally just decided to do it. So if you enjoyed, please be sure to drop a like and share it with your friends. If you'd consider subscribing, click over here. If you want to see what YouTube recommends you watch next, click over here. And as always, I look forward to seeing you guys next time.